People like to put up walls. We create shelters with walls. We divide those buildings into rooms using more walls. When people want to partition the outdoors, they put up fences, which are just another type of wall. When you have a horde of zombies in the neighborhood or a marauding war party of road bandits driving around, some walls are a good investment. Walls and fences are commonplace where people settle and therefore useful types of terrain to have models for in miniature gaming. In this video, I will show you how I make industrial fence segment terrain for modern and post-apocalyptic miniature gaming. Let's jump right into it. I will be making two different types of fences, corrugated metal and chain link. The structure of these fences can be divided into two separate parts, the frame and the fencing material. I will be using wooden beverage stir sticks for most of the frame. These are handy for simulating wooden boards in miniature scale. I find their slimmer shape to look more realistic than popsicle sticks when juxtaposed with miniatures. These stir sticks are easy to cut with scissors on account of their thin shape. Just be careful not to cut yourself. Each fence frame is made of a baseboard, two foot pieces, and two posts. The baseboard is a three inch long piece of stir stick. The feet are one inch long and are also cut from stir sticks. The posts are two inches long and are cut from either stir sticks or wooden skewers depending on which type of fence I am making. I use the stir sticks for the corrugated fences and the skewers for the chain link fences. I'm aiming to use these pieces of terrain for 32 millimeter or smaller scales of miniature gaming. You can change the dimensions of the frame pieces to accommodate your preferred scale. I should mention that these terrain pieces will not be based. I'm making these fences without bases so that they are more environment agnostic. Details on a model as well as its base can aesthetically limit usage on the tabletop. For example, I generally would not want to place a tree with a lush base on a tabletop that's supposed to be a winter forest. I want these fences to be as versatile as possible, so I am foregoing a base entirely. The feet of the frame are sufficient to keep the fences upright and stable so long as there is no strong wind. Miniature gaming is usually done indoors, so this should not be a problem. If you want to base your fences, then you can just skip the baseboard and feet by attaching the fence posts directly onto a base. I'm using hot glue because it solidifies fast and I have plenty of it. PVA or super glue would also work. Glue the feet about one centimeter from each end of the baseboard. This spacing allows two fence pieces to be placed close together to form a 90 degree corner without the feet overlapping. Posts are the final pieces to the frame. For the corrugated metal fences, I attach the stir stick posts in line with the frame's feet. For the chain link fences, I attach the wooden skewer poles at the very ends of the frame. Offset the posts to allow the fencing material to be attached more centered on the model later on. Now that the frames are done, it is time to prepare the fencing materials. Simulating corrugated metal is very easy. Just paint corrugated paper a silver color. You can buy corrugated paper at the craft store, but it can also be found in some cardboards. If you're salvaging corrugated paper from cardboard, then take a look at the cross-section edge. Confirm that the corrugation matches your desired scale. Sometimes store-bought corrugated paper has a flat sheet attached to the back. This can be helpful if you're gluing the corrugated paper to another surface. We want corrugation on both sides for this project, so the flat sheet has got to go. If you're salvaging the corrugation from cardboard, then you will definitely have to remove one or more of such layers. 
My technique for separating a flat backing from corrugated paper is to run a toothpick or wooden skewer down a corrugation groove and then pull the stick sideways against the corrugation. Repeat this process for each groove in the corrugation. Start at the end and work your way across, snapping one groove off of the sheet at a time until the entire backing sheet is detached. Start with the toothpick, and if you're lucky, you can separate the rest of the sheet by hand. Avoid stretching the paper while working it. Do not worry about tearing some of the paper. You can glue a bunch of these torn pieces together to represent a crumbling or patched section of the fence. Cut the corrugated paper into 3 inch long by 2 inch tall pieces with the corrugation grooves running parallel to the height. Attach this paper to the two posts on the frame with any of the previously mentioned glues. Chain link fences are also easy to simulate. Fiberglass window mesh looks to be just the right scale for miniature gaming. Use a box cutter to cut out a 3 inch by 2 inch rectangle from the mesh. Make sure you rotate it 45 degrees to get that nice diamond shaped grid we see on chain link fences. Use super glue or hot glue to attach the mesh to the poles on the fence frame. The fence segments have been built and are ready to be painted. I'm skipping a layer of primer. The paint should adhere strongly to the porous paper and wood components. Plus, I am concerned that my primer is too thin and will just fill in the holes of the fiberglass mesh. The entire chain link fence frame and the corrugated paper on the other fences gets a coat of silver paint. You only need a dry brushing of silver to color the fiberglass mesh. Too much paint will fill in the holes of the mesh like a ring dipped in bubble soap. We don't want that. Remember kids, say no to bubble soap. The corrugated paper may warp while you are painting. It is interesting that this batch warped so much more than my previous batches. I used a different type of paper this time and possibly overstretched it. I was able to restore some of the folds in my fences after the paint fully dried. Next I paint the frame of the corrugated fence with a watered down brown paint. The thinned paint stains the wood and allows some of the natural texture to show through. The fences are mostly done. Set aside a few fence segments to add weathering effects to. Grab some brown paint, dab and dry brush speckles and streaks onto the metal details. Follow up with a dry brushing of an orange-brown mixture around the brown spots and along the edges of any broken pieces. The rust details really make these models pop. Now you know how to make some industrial fence terrain for modern to post-apocalyptic miniature gaming. These are some of my favorite pieces of terrain. The lack of a big solid base on these pieces is liberating. You can tip them over to represent a part of the fence that was breached, and you don't have to stare at the bottom of a big blocky base. You can even stack some to create sheds and shanty towns. They are a type of terrain that is less of a scenery set piece and more of a building block. Craft some for yourself and see what you can make on the tabletop. Think of it like this. The sooner you get your hands on these pieces of terrain, the sooner you can keep those flesh-eating zombies and adrenaline-hungry road bandits off your property. <laughs> All right. And that is going to end a session of crafting. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like. If you did not, then tell me why. If you want to see more content, then take a stroll around the perimeter fence of your apocalypse outpost and hit the subscribe button. 
keep making and keep playing. Have a good one. Barry.